Hi, uh, am I on the air? Yep. Fuck. Thanks. Do I have everybody's attention now? Do I have everybody's attention now? Don, I got you. Don, I, Do I have everybody's Sunday attention night. now. You put them cameras on me, then you must be willing To get that heart touched, this a must-see feeling The news ain't good, then it must be villain So I say it's tag grounded, I don't trust these feelings Spread a crush your nose, and I'm on your air Highest next on the cloud, am I in the air? Sunday night's round time, I flex my better Voltron transform to DX Don, mega and unseen You probably think I'm nice, cause I slow like a stream To your wireless device, and the smoke full of steam on any given night, how short like a piece of any given slice. Uh, and for the latest and what is best about I tune in and tune the rest out, Don. You gotta tell them, am I in the clear? Is this thing gone? Am I on the air? On the air. Well, what is going down, everybody? Welcome to a brand new edition of Am I on the Air? I'm your host, Don Mega, and I welcome you to the show, everybody. Tonight, it is Season 16, Episode 10, and tonight's show is titled, War Ready, War Ready, War Ready, War Ready. Now, a little bit behind behind the scenes on that show title, um, I... Apologize for not putting out a new episode last week. You've been listening to me for any period of time. You know that it pains me to not have an episode out every single week for you guys. I try my damn best to have a new episode up every week. So after last weekend, the new movie review I had for you guys was Pacific Rim Uprising. And I was going to call the show War Ready. Because the trailer had the Tupac song in it Already And uh, we were going to talk about Pacific Rim Didn't end up getting a show out Been extremely extremely busy And then I was putting together Tonight's show And I decided I'll just keep that title Because the other new movie I was going to review Is Ready Player One Well we have Ready in that title I was going to call it War Ready so War Ready kind of kind of still means something. Still kind of connects the two together. So, I know, it's silly stuff. You guys are like, I don't care. But <laughs> in any case, uh, that is why tonight's show is titled War Ready. Uh, we will be reviewing Pacific Rim Uprising. We'll, we'll be reviewing Ready Player One. Non-spoilers, so don't worry if you're new to the show. I will not spoil anything, so do not worry. It will be spoiler free. So, uh, yeah, it's been a couple weeks Our last episode uh, was reviewing Tomb Raider It was You Messed With The Wrong Family it came out on March 18th And uh, it's been a couple weeks, man We are broadcasting live from the Red Dragons Radio Studios Here on April 3rd It is a Tuesday night uh, So I'm way off schedule Because not only did I not get the new episode up in time But I'm a day later than normal too I've been putting out the new episodes every Monday and here I am on a Tuesday But hey Even though I didn't get it out last night I told myself you will get this episode done And you will get it up On Tuesday night So here I am And thank you everybody For tuning in Thank you for everybody that's tweeted And been asking me Where's that new episode out Here it is I'm sorry I got exciting news though You know about a month ago Am I on the Air started streaming on iHeartRadio And that was a big deal You know, iHeartRadio is one of the best radio apps that are out there You know, usually when people are streaming a radio app And I check with them iHeartRadio, nine times out of ten, is what they're listening to um, You know, or Pandora, stuff like that So I was very happy uh, that Am I on the Air is now streaming on iHeartRadio If you didn't know that, and you use iHeartRadio Hey, look for us and follow us on the app And you can, you know, get all the new episodes right there You don't have to go searching for any, anywhere else But I'm very happy to announce That Am I on the Air 
after many, many years, because <laughs> I've been on the air for over five years now, several hundred episodes in the books, I'm very happy to say that we are now officially on Spotify. That is correct. Spotify, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm super, super stoked. I've been a big Spotify fan for many, many years. I pay for Spotify. I pay 15 bucks a month. I have a family plan. I can listen to all the music I want. I love Spotify. And about a year or so ago, Spotify started to do podcasts. They started to add podcasts to their library. And I said, man, it'd be cool if one day we can get on there. And it's been an uphill battle. We've tried. We've been denied before. But I'm happy to announce that it finally happened and I am up on Spotify and I gotta tell you man out of all the apps because we're available on a lot of apps now right we just talked about Heart Radio we've been on Stitcher for such a long time Stitcher was the original podcast app that we've been on you know you got TuneIn you got Spreaker all that good stuff but Spotify is the most beautiful looking one when I pull up the show on that app You know, the way it details the episodes, you get the descriptions in a very easy format. You get to see the thumbnails that I put with the episode titles, which I think is really cool because you don't get that on any of the other uh, streaming platforms. But Spotify, it looks top notch. And I want to thank Spotify for including Am I on the Air into their podcast section. If you use Spotify, just search Am I on the Air. It should pop right up, podcast, boom, hit follow. And um, I think all you got to do is just follow along with us If you just hit follow or subscribe I don't even think it's a subscribe I think you just follow And um, you can listen to all the new episodes on there It looks beautiful You can share it very easily to Facebook, Twitter All your social media I'm just over the moon with it We just got added to Spotify about a week ago or so And it's uh, been very, very exciting So once again, very happy to be a part of Spotify now And one other Platform, I do want to give a quick shout out to right out the gate is, of course, Stardust. Um, I'm a verified user over on Stardust. I try to provide for you guys all the latest and greatest reviews, whether it be from movies, TV shows, trailers. Stardust is an amazing app. I talk about it every show. If you haven't downloaded it yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Download Stardust, their 30 second mini reviews. So it's very, very cool, especially for fans of my show. You want to get my insight into a movie right away, right? I just missed two weeks of doing this show. If you wanted to know what I thought about Pacific Rim, if you had Stardust, you would have known a week, two weeks ago, right? If you wanted to know what I thought about Ready Player One, you would have saw my awesome Stardust video on Ready Player One, which is one of my favorite ones I've ever done. It's a really fun app. It's free. You can watch 30 second mini reviews Hey you can post your own Follow me, I'll follow you back You can check me out on Stardust At Don Mega, D-O-N-M-E-G-A Follow along Alright, so with that Kind of uh, stuff out the way Let's jump into our movie reviews Like I said, non-spoiler, don't worry about it I'll, I'll rewind a couple weeks And we'll go back to Pacific Rim Uprising, Pacific Rim 2 um, I was looking very forward to this This came out on my birthday So I went um, actually, the night before it came out, uh, it came out on March 23rd. I went March 22nd, actually, to a pre screening, checked it out in IMAX, and um, I was looking forward to this. Now, I'm not, let me give you some um, background. I wasn't the biggest fan of the original Pacific Rim movie. I thought it was okay. Uh, it's one of those movies where when the robots and the kaiju were fighting, it's a great movie. When they're not fighting, it was boring as shit. The acting was horrible, and I just didn't care for the movie very much. So it kind of lingered in that middle ground for me because all the action stuff was fantastic, but the rest of it couldn't carry. So I was a little worried about Pacific Rim Uprising because I was like, is it going to be more of the same? You know, we got a new director this time. Guillermo del Toro did the first movie. He stepped down, and we got Steven DeKnight to do this one. And I had big high hopes because I was like, man, fresh blood coming in, John Boyega, you know, no more Charlie Hunnam. This could actually be really, really cool. Well, unfortunately, Pacific Rim Uprising is exactly 
what the original Pacific Rim was. It, the formula is the same. When the robots are fighting the kaiju, it's a fun movie. There's some great action in there. When it's not happening, you're bored off your ass and you're just like, come on, come on. And uh, I didn't like it. I'm sorry. I will give props to John Boyega. I thought he was fantastic in it. I thought he had a ton of charisma. This dude is becoming one of my favorite actors out there. He's so good in everything he does. And um, he really killed it. He put his all into this. But um, Scott Eastwood, horrible. Everybody else in the film, pretty horrible. Charlie Day is in this again from the first movie. And he's horrible. Um, It just, it, it falters all over the place. And I'm sad about it. So... Yeah, it wasn't a happy birthday to me when I checked out this movie. Um, so I hate to say it, but Pacific Rim Uprising gets two out of five stars. Two out of five stars. It was just I, and that's because of the fights. <laughs> All right. So that's Pacific Rim Uprising. Let's fast forward to this past weekend, and we checked out the brand new Steven Spielberg film, Ready Player One. This has been in the making for several years. It's based on a a best-selling book. I have liked the trailers for this movie. I have. I thought it looked really interesting. But my excitement level was never really through the roof for it. But I was excited. So I went opening night in IMAX once again. Actually, IMAX 3D, which I haven't done a 3D movie in quite some time. And I'm very happy to say that this movie is... Amazing I loved Ready Player One Now I am a child of the 80's This movie Hinges on children Of the 80's This movie is 80's nostalgia To the T It starts right out in the beginning Playing Van Halen's Jump Which was just an awesome way to get into the film The movie references The visuals Very heavy 80's driven Um, Which I just got an amazing kick out of The movie has a ton of heart Really great acting A really cool story The virtual reality aspect of it And the way that they hinge it in with the live action Was just mind blowing Visually it's outstanding It was very nice to see Steven Spielberg Go back to his roots on this film And I think it paid off It paid off more than I ever could have imagined like I said, my my excitement level was pretty middle ground for this film. And I walked out going, damn, that was fantastic. Um, everybody in it, man. Ty Sheridan, great. Olivia Cook, great. Um, all the characters, their avatars. Ben Mendelsohn is the villain. TJ Miller pops up as a voice in this thing You don't ever see him But he's a voice of one of the characters That's in the Oasis And it's great As soon as you hear his voice You're like ah, I can't give this movie enough props I would love to go see it again There's so many easter eggs in this movie My mind was going ballistic Trying to follow the screen And catch all of the really cool characters And easter eggs that were popping up all over the place I was like, oh my god, I saw Batman. Oh, I saw this. Oh, there's a Ninja Turtle. Oh, there's Voltron. Oh, there's Power Ranger. <laughs> there's, a, you know, I'm like, oh my god, there's just things everywhere. It's so, so cool. So if you were hesitating at all, don't do it. Go have a fun time. Shut your brain off. Get a big bucket of popcorn and enjoy Ready Player One. I loved it and I'm going to give it. Five Don Megas That's right, five out of five stars This might be my first five star Of 2018 I'm trying to think back If there's been anything else I know we're early on We're only in March But I don't recall anything in January (laughs) I don't recall anything really in February I might be wrong I'll have to go back and look at this But I'm pretty sure Ready Player One Is the first five star movie of the year Uh, Very well done I couldn't ask for anything more Highly, highly recommended So there you go ladies and gentlemen My two reviews Pacific Rim Uprising 2 out of 5 And Ready Player One 5 out of 5 Alright So let's go ahead and switch gears We have 2 weeks worth of news 
to get through So I'm going to try to blaze through it as quickly as possible So we can keep the show at a reasonable run time, alright um, We have your first look at Renee Zellweger as Judy Garland And uh, you can't even tell it's her Pretty cool, man The movie's directed by um, uh, Rupert and um, And it just looks so cool um, not that I'm looking forward to a Julie Garland movie, but on just the way that um, Renee Zellweger looks, I, I I'm blown away. It's it's very very cool. Um, I know we don't talk music very often, but Fifth Harmony has announced a hiatus to pursue solo endeavors. Oh look at that! They lose one member, and now all of a sudden they all want to go solo. Going back to Steven Spielberg, he says Indiana Jones 5 is going to officially start filming in April of 2019. So literally in one year, we're going to get up and running on Indiana Jones 5. Simon Pegg says that he doesn't think that Quentin Tarantino's Star Trek movie will be rated R. I don't know, Quentin probably has something to say about that, but that's (laughs) that's what Simon Pegg says. Once again, we have a ton of articles up about Infinity War. It's all over our social media, Twitter, Facebook. I'm not going to get into a lot of the Infinity War news. We are literally less than a month now from this movie coming out. And this is the biggest movie that people don't want to know nothing about. So I don't want to piss anybody off. So I'm going to hold back on that stuff. Stellan Skarsgård and Emily Watson are joining Jared Harris in a new HBO show called uh, Chernobyl. Which, of course, is going to be about the 1986 nuclear power plant. Um, This isn't really a spoiler, but going back to Infinity War, one of the directors, Joe Russo... um, So one of the best scenes in Captain America uh, Civil War is the airport scene, right? Everybody talked about the airport sequence. That's the big battle between the two factions, Team Iron Man versus Team Cap. And Joe Russo has said that Infinity War... Has what they call three or four airport sequences So basically saying what you loved about that one scene in Civil War You're going to get three or four of them in in Infinity War And that, my friends, is pretty awesome (laughs) Blink-182 has announced they're going to be doing a Las Vegas residency Uh, Ben Affleck and Oscar Isaac are joining the new drug thriller Uh, It was formerly called Triple Frontier and uh, But now they're going to call it something different uh, They have not released the new name Filming just started last week um, We do have an article up with John Boyega And director Stephen DeKnight Explaining why only certain characters are back From the original film If you're interested to know about that From Pacific Rim Um we got a couple articles up talking about some details on the Rampage movie That comes out in a couple weeks with The Rock The Lego Ninjago movie director Charlie Bean Is set to direct Disney's live action Slash CG Lady and the Tramp remake Yes, they're going to be doing Lady and the Tramp So congratulations to Charlie Bean uh, for getting that I'm really excited about this news It looks like Matt Ryan Who plays Constantine on the CW is actually going to be joining Legends of Tomorrow as a series regular. That's right. So Legends of Tomorrow coming back for a season four, and Matt Ryan, who's actually popped up for a couple episodes this season, is going to become a full-time cast member for the next season. This gets me very excited. Matt Ryan, of course, had his own Constantine show on NBC a couple years back, Only had one season, but it was really, really good And NBC pulled the plug way too quickly Uh, Then he popped up on an episode of Arrow a couple years ago um, Which was really cool because it was nice to see They were going to kind of keep his character and everything from his solo show And bring it into another DC show, right? And then he popped up again in Legends of Tomorrow this season Multiple episodes He's so great as Constantine And I've always said from the beginning Why is Constantine not a part of the Legends And now he's going to be So congratulations to Matt Ryan Joining season 4 of Legends of Tomorrow Uh, We've got a new trailer for Cloak and Dagger Which has just dropped Of course that's a new Marvel TV show Coming to the Freeform Network The show uh, will debut in June Ving Rhames has been cast in the Cagney and Lacey reboot 
that will be coming to CBS. He'll be joining Sarah Drew and Michelle Hurd in that. Zach Penn, he is a writer over in Hollywood. He's done a lot of things, and he's talking about expanding the Matrix universe. Yes, he is writing the next Matrix film right now. This has been in the works for a while, and he's still cranking on it, but he's got a ton of love and a ton of passion for the Matrix, and he wants to do something special, so very, very cool there. Elizabeth Moss is going to be joining Tiffany Haddish and Melissa McCarthy in the comic book adaptation The Kitchen, uh, which is the mobster comic. Um, good addition here. You know, I think Melissa McCarthy and Tiffany Haddish were a great combo. How Elizabeth Moss will fit in with the two of them, that will be interesting and that will be curious to see. But um, she obviously pulled off her audition, so I can't wait to see what she brings to that. We have a new trailer for Tracy Morgan's new show, The Last OG, which will be premiering this week on TBS. Very happy to see Tracy Morgan back doing his thing. Remember, he was in that bad car accident a couple uh, couple years ago. He had to learn. He almost died. He had to learn how to walk and talk again. So I'm glad to see him return to TV and get his own sitcom. Very, very cool. Definitely check out The Last OG and support him. Um, RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 3 is the most watched season in Drag Race history Craziness We have a brand new trailer for Sicario 2 Soldado um, Which is actually, it looks like they've renamed the film to Day of the Soldado So um, yeah, so it looks like they've given a new title to the film but check out the trailer, it is pretty awesome I'm looking forward to this I wasn't even the biggest fan of the first Sicario movie But I like the trailer for this one But I also did like the trailer for the original film Who knows, I'll check it out Because I check everything out Remember Amazon's going to be doing A Lord of the Rings TV series Well supposedly They're looking to spend About 500 million dollars To make this show That is insane man So uh, yeah, that's what uh they're looking to spend, and I won't watch it. Juliette Lewis and Bridget Everett are joining HBO's Camping. Um, remember, that's the new show that Lena Dunham is going to be doing over on HBO. Um, the Tom Hanks, Mr. Rogers movie, they're saying, is not a biopic film. So we'll see what ends up really turning out with that, because I thought it was, but um, that's what they're that's what they're saying right now. So we will see We have the first official trailer for Tag Which looks really really funny It's with Jeremy Renner and John Hamm Um, Basically a group of friends That have been playing Tag since they were little kids And they continue to play it all the way into their adulthood And um But Jeremy Renner is like the one guy that no one can tag And they you know They're like we're gonna get him this time Um it's a silly ass concept It's actually based on a true story Silly enough which they do cover in the trailer if you haven't seen this yet, check it out. It's pretty funny to see. Check out Tag. And of course, once again, you can always check out all the trailers on our official webpage, which is amiontheair.com. Mark Ruffalo and Kamal Nanjiani are going to star in The True American, which is a 9-11 drama based on the nonfiction book. Uh, We got a bunch of Infinity War covers that we posted This is uh, all from Empire Magazine Which is really cool Um, Congratulations to Black Panther Which, you know, it hasn't broken enough records as is It is also now the most tweeted about movie of all time (laughs) So there's a record for you The most tweeted about movie of all time We also posted up the official logo for DC's new film Shazam uh, nothing pretty crazy here, but it looks it looks cool. I, I'm looking forward to Shazam and seeing what Zachary Levy's going to do. Allison Williams has joined a series of unfortunate events. Um, she pops up at the end of season two, and she has signed on for season three. So pretty cool there. American Horror Story. Uh, they have announced that Kat, Kathy Bates will be returning for season eight. Makes sense. They like to bring back a lot of the same people. Jacob Tremblay will star in a new Universal Pictures comedy called Good Boys, uh, which has been described as a mix of Superbad and Sausage Party. That's a hell of a mix right there, but um, hey, Jacob Tremblay is awesome in pretty much everything he does. 
Uh, we have the new trailer for the Titan up and running. Now, the Titan, since I posted this trailer, the Titan is actually now available to stream on Netflix. I want to see this movie. I have not had a chance to check it out yet. Once I do, I will review it. This is the new Sam Worthington movie. It's a sci fi thriller. It is now streaming on Netflix. So check out the trailer. If you like it, head on over to Netflix. Amy Poehler will make her feature directorial debut with a new Netflix original comedy called Wine Country. She will also produce and star in it. So congratulations to Amy Poehler. Um, Deadpool 2 has done some test screenings and it is outscoring the original film. So it is getting higher and better scores, which is pretty awesome. I couldn't be more excited for Deadpool 2, but hearing the good news about these test screenings gets me way more pumped, man. I am so excited for Deadpool 2. We have your first look. Sci-Fi has revealed the first look for George R. R. Martin's new show, Night Flyers. So check that out. We have everything wrong with Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, Cradle of Life. We have everything wrong with Nomeo and Juliet. We have the Honest trailer for every Wes Anderson movie. God, that guy bores the shit out of me. I don't understand why he's as big as he is. I just don't get it. Um, We have the trailer for Can You Ever Forgive Me, starring Melissa McCarthy. Once again, the new Sicario 2 trailer, Day of the Soldado. Check that out. Um, Yeah. The Ant-Man sequel will explore different generations of Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is something we expected that we're going to see some flashbacks there and see a little little Hank Pym and his wife there getting down in the earlier versions of Ant-Man and the Wasp. So looking very forward to that. NBC boss Robert Greenblatt has said that we might not have seen the last of the TV show Smash. Um... This was a show that lasted, I think, a couple seasons, and then it got pulled. It was a musical TV show, and uh, I know my wife watched it. She really liked it, but um, hey, maybe a revival is in the works. We will see. Speaking of revival, I actually checked out the first couple episodes of the Roseanne revival, and it wasn't too bad. Um, I actually never watched Roseanne when it was on originally. It just wasn't my cup of tea at the time. I decided to check it out, give it a whirl. And like I said, it wasn't too bad. I don't I don't love it, but um, getting into those characters and, and feeling the updated themes, not too bad, not too bad. I also checked out the pilot episode of Alex Incorporated, um, and uh, it's another comedy. And it was okay. Um, I'll probably give it another couple episodes. I'm on the fence about it. I am holding on though because it's about podcasting So um, it's a comedy About a podcast network So as a person who runs one uh, RedDragonsRadio.com You know I found it I found the concept to be very interesting Um, But yeah we'll see The the pilot was just okay though Um, I did uh, Since our last episode I also checked out another new show Called Champions uh, over on NBC and uh, Mindy Kaling is, is a producer on that one And um, that one's pretty funny I'm really liking Champions so far So I don't know how I got off on that tirade But a um, couple new episodes A couple new shows for you to check out We have another trailer, it's Under the Silver Lake It's a new Andrew Garfield drama movie Check that out um, The writers of Avengers Infinity War have explained how the Infinity Stones help shape the movie's plot, so if you're interested, you can check that out. Um, Brie Larson's Captain Marvel is being compared to uh, Chris Evans' Captain America by the Avengers Infinity War screenwriters when comparing the two characters together. Um, you know, We have another article up with the writers talking about character team-ups, like why they chose certain people to be with each other and the way that they kind of divided the characters up, which is pretty cool. Uh, they have an, we have another article up about Infinity War where we talk about why Thanos is the main character of the movie. So that's pretty cool to get that insight on Thanos. Nine one one spinoffs, cash changes. Ryan Murphy talks about the future of Fox's biggest hit. That's right, nine one one, which is a nice little show Ryan Murphy came out with, which really centers around a fire department. Um, but then also includes some police stuff with Angela Bassett. 
Um, it's kind of got that true story feel all about 911 calls that come in and, and the stuff that they have to go deal with. I really, really like the show. It was only on for, I think, 10 episodes for the first season, but it has already become the most watched show on Fox right now. So Fox has, of course, renewed it for another season. They're already looking into possibly doing spinoffs. Um, Connie Britton is on the show. They're not sure she'll even return. She only had a one-year deal on her contract, so we'll see what ends up happening with that. Um, Check the show out. If you haven't seen it, they're all available on Hulu. I'm sure Fox On Demand. Check it out, man. It's worth it. I really, really dug 911, and it's good to see what a hit and what an impact it has made over on Fox. We have the first, uh, actually second official trailer for Hotel Transylvania 3. Looks pretty cute. I know my daughter's super excited for that one. Um, the When the new um, Avengers Infinity War trailer dropped, it was the third highest debut view count ever. So the third biggest trailer review ever. I'm very shocked it wasn't number one, to be honest. But um, hey, you never know with trailers. Um, let's see here. We also have another new trailer for The Spy Who Dumped Me. Which is a new comedy coming out starring Mila Kunis and Kate McKinnon. Um, Justin Theroux is also in this. And um, I don't know, man. Looks kind of cheesy, but we'll see. I need to see another trailer on this one. YouTube Red has announced the completion of principal photography for The Vulture Club, which is an original feature length film starring Susan Sarandon, Edie Falco, and Matt Bomer. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be on YouTube Red. Zazie Beats will be joining Dakota Fanning and Army Hammer in a new thriller. Uh, Zazie Beats, man, she plays Domino in Deadpool 2, and she is very in demand. This will not be the last time you hear me talk about her and a project she's doing, Uh, so pay attention to that name. We have the first trailer for Action Point, which is a new Johnny Knoxville comedy movie. Looks very jackassy. Check out Action Point if jackass is your thing. Um, the Russo brothers, uh, we're going back to them, but this isn't about Infinity War. They're going to be teaming up with Darren Lynn Boosman for, uh, to bring the tension experience to more cities. It's a interactive experience that's in Las Vegas and they're going to be working together to bring it into more cities. Insidious star Lynn Shea is joining the grudge reboot. So that's pretty cool there. TV lands hit series younger will premiere on June 5th. We have the first official trailer for Cobra Kai, of course, coming to YouTube Red as well. Tessa Thompson. We are having a Thor Ragnarok reunion as Tessa Thompson, who of course played Valkyrie in Thor Ragnarok. She's reuniting with Thor himself, Chris Hemsworth, for the Man in Black movie. That's right. Remember, we talked about it a couple weeks ago that Chris Hemsworth is going to be doing the new Men in Black uh, spinoff. And now Tessa Thompson is joining as well. She'll probably be one of his partners. And uh, I love the pairing of these two. They were great chemistry together in Ragnarok. Why not do another movie together? They obviously like working together. So pretty awesome. Congratulations, Tessa Thompson. Joining up with Chris Hemsworth for the Men in Black. We have your first official teaser trailer. And now the full trailer for Terminal starring Margot Robbie. Um, pretty weird movie, but check that out if you're interested. Kira Sedgwick and Jeffrey Donovan have joined the cast of Villains, which is going to be a dark comedy thriller. They're joining up with Bill Skarsgård and Maka Monroe in the upcoming film. We have the brand new Deadpool 2 trailer. Um, this trailer is so f- fucking awesome. I'm going to drop the up on there because that's what Deadpool does. Um, it's funny. I was watching this trailer. I didn't even know it was a red band when I first watched it. And it starts off with him running at the cab. Same cabbie, Dopinder from the first movie, right? And he's like, start the car. Start the fucking car. And my little four-year-old sitting next to me watching it. And she's like, <laughs> start the fucking car. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> so be careful, guys, when you watch these trailers around the little ones. Because uh, they love to say those bad words. Um, but this trailer's so good. It is so, so good. Um, 
all the quick shots, the action, just everything going for it. It's just so awesome, man. Cable, it, just the look of it. We've definitely upped our budget from the first movie. It's so good. <laughs> so if you haven't, for whatever reason, checked out this trailer yet, check out the brand new Deadpool 2 trailer. Or, as I hope they're still calling it, the untitled Deadpool sequel. <laughs> so look for that. X Factor, there's some cameos in there. It is worth your time, my friends. Um, the Big Bang Theory has cast Jerry O'Connell as Sheldon's older brother, so that's pretty awesome. I like Jerry O'Connell. Um, let's see here. Jay Ali has been cast in Daredevil Season 3, so uh, we don't know who he's going to be playing yet, um, but he has joined the cast. James Gunn says he's seen Infinity War, and he thinks it's incredible. Quote, Unquote Incredible We have the image of DJ Katrona As Superman from the cancelled Justice League Mortal movie Um, I don't like it at all He looks horrible Um, the suit looks horrible I don't know if it's just because I'm so used to the Henry Cavill one now But it looks so dated Um, and this was just, what, 2008, I think this movie was supposed to come out So it's not that old, but man, I did not like the Superman suit whatsoever from that movie Uh, we have a hundred Deadpool 2 trailer screenshots posted up on our Twitter page If you want to click it and check it out So you can see all the little nuggets that you might have missed when that trailer was going on Seth Rogen's Hilarity for Charity is coming to Netflix And he's got an all-star cast coming with him So that's going to be pretty cool I like the idea of it Netflix Has also revealed the new trailer For another YA thriller series Called The Rain Um, Pierre Morel Or Morel Will direct a new sci-fi thriller Called The New Mrs. Keller With Clay's Bang As the male lead I don't know who any of those people are So hopefully you do Um, Chris Evans Makes it sound like he is done After Avengers 4 playing Captain America He says basically along the lines like You don't want to stay on the ship too long And then have people want to throw you off Um, You know I think everybody's contract is wrapping up And they're not lying When they say they're done But I think Marvel will be smart and lock these guys back into a little something, something. I'm just saying. So I would take it with a very thin layer there that anybody who says right now in the MCU that they're leaving, that, yeah, okay, buddy, whatever you say. Uh, Hawaii Five O's Alex O'Laughlin says that he's open to returning for more seasons. Um, you know, they're already going into season 8 on that show And I still watch it, I like Y50 Um You know, but he, yeah, he's he's down to stick around for, for more seasons So why not, right? Let's do it Um I also checked out the season premiere of Krypton I was not really a fan And I'm a massive Superman fan But I could not really get into Krypton I will watch the second episode See if I can get into it a little bit more But that pilot just Didn't really grab me So we'll have to see on that one Once again check out my Stardust so you can see reviews To all the different movies and trailers Um, Shane Black's new Upcoming Predator movie will be converted to 3D and he says a trailer is Coming soon so for I don't know Why they would waste the time to convert it to 3D People really don't care anymore Uh, I hope a trailer is coming soon We need to see something from this damn film because I have no damn idea what the hell's going on. Um, we have the teaser trailer for Superfly. Yes, they redid Superfly, which hits theaters on June fifteenth. So look for that. Joe Edgerton has been cast um, in Netflix's Henry the Fifth film, The King, which he also co-wrote. So very cool there. So glad to see him join that. Noah Hawley says that the fourth season of Fargo will be another period piece. Margot Robbie is set to produce a female focused Shakespeare series. Interesting enough. Um, Josh Dumal and Megan Fox, Transformers Reunited, 
are reuniting for the family comedy Think Like a Dog. All right. We have the teaser trailer for Doug Lyman's new YouTube original sci-fi series Impulse. So check that out. It'll be an upcoming 10-episode hour-long teen sci-fi series. Early tracking places Rampage on course for a $35 million opening. Very nice for Rampage. We have an article up with Don Cheadle talking about um, War Machine and Rhodey and where his character takes him in Infinity War. American Gods producers are set to adapt Astro City comic book for a live action TV series. Don't know much about Astro City, but hey, I'll take another live action TV series anytime, right? We have your first trailer for Party Bus to Hell. Yes, I am not lying. Um, it is a new Terror Reed horror comedy uh, about a party bus. A party bus to hell. <laughs> Oh man, the Spice Girls are reuniting for an animated superhero movie Okay Uh, Pacific Rim Uprising director Stephen Knight says he already has an idea for a third movie If you saw the movie and the way it ended You know that they are definitely planting seeds for a third one Will we get it? I don't know But I do like the idea that they went for So it would make a third one kind of unique if they did go through with it So we'll see how that foreign box office goes It was the foreign box office that got us Pacific Rim Uprising So we'll see what it does If it gets us the third movie going forward HBO has announced a May premiere date For Fahrenheit 451 Starring Michael B. Jordan and Michael Shannon Looks really really good So I'm glad to hear it will be coming out next month Showtime has released the official trailer For I'm Dying Up Here Season 2 Which will be premiering on May 6th Entertainment One is developing a Street Fighter TV series That's pretty awesome It'll be based on the storyline from Street Fighter 2 The World Warrior Amy Adams is in talks to join Mark Ruffalo In True American So that's pretty cool there Steven Spielberg says that Peter Jackson Will still make the adventures of Tin Tin 2 I could give a shit Don't care at all Um we have your first teaser trailer from Nickelodeon And their new Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles That they're doing Their kind of reboot there uh, Pacific Rim Uprising director Would also love to helm A retro Doom Patrol movie yeah, I don't see that happening Tiffany Haddish is set to lead a vo- uh, Set to voice a lead role In the upcoming Lego Movie sequel So that's pretty cool there Michael Showalter is set to direct uh, Jessica Chastain and Octavia Spencer in their new untitled Christmas comedy that they're going to be doing. So that's a pretty cool addition there. Noah Hawley says he is still working on the Doctor Doom movie, but he won't really give out much more information than that. I still don't understand why we need a Doctor Doom movie, but hey, I guess that's why I don't get the big bucks. Harry Connick Jr. is set to star in a new musical adaptation of The Sting Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who of course were directing the Han Solo movie and then left over creative differences, we were always wondering what's going to end up with their names on the final product. Well, it sounds like they will still be listed as executive producers on the film, but directing credits will officially go to Ron Howard. Let's see here. Um... Former Daredevil showrunner Stephen Knight wants to make a Moon Knight show for Marvel and Netflix. I like it. We need some Moon Knight up in this bitch, so let's do it. I also watched, binged, and finished Santa Clarita Diet over on Netflix. This show is so awesome. I can't hype it enough. If you haven't seen it yet, what are you waiting for? If you've never even heard of this show, which is what most people are, I tell people about this show all the time, and they're like, what is it called? If you haven't seen this, go back and watch season one. Season two just came out a couple weeks ago on my birthday, and it was so good. We binged it within that week, and I'm so sad because it's over already. Ten episodes done so fast because they're only a half hour long. It was so, so good though Santa Clarita Diet Drew Barrymore, Timothy Oliphant She's basically a zombie She needs to eat people to stay alive But it's done in a very funny way I can't hype it enough 
Give it a chance Look it up on Netflix Santa Clarita Diet I promise you're going to like it Alright um, F1 and Netflix Formula 1 and Netflix are teaming up For a 2018 FIA Formula 1 World Championship Documentary series That will premiere in early 2019 We have a new TV spot For the uh, Teen Titans Go to the Movies Which will open in theaters on July 27th um, They've been dropping a lot of Avengers Infinity War TV spots I haven't been watching all of them But I have been posting them For those of you that just can't wait to see any new footage From these films Right Um Black Panther has become the highest grossing superhero film ever in the US So congratulations to them for that Um, That's pretty awesome right there man Who would have ever thunk it Black Panther man Um, We got an article up about Star Trek Discovery What universe is it in What timeline uh, And stuff about season 2 teases If you're interested FXX is not moving forward With their animated Deadpool series That Donald Glover was going to be doing Due to creative differences There's a lot of confusion on this too Because FX was trying to say that Donald Glover was too busy And then Donald Glover came out And said I'm not too busy i got plenty of time for this And he posted kind of like a a fake script For the Deadpool show Showing look at how much time I have I actually just created something um, That's fake (laughs) So I don't know what the disconnect is here This would have been a really cool TV series to see But now it's not going to go down Um, Pacific Rim Uprising The weekend it came out It did debunk Black Panther from the number one spot At the box office It was the first movie to do so After Black Panther had been number one for five weeks in a row Um, Pacific Rim finally knocked it out Uh, It it only did about 30 million here in the US um, But it made over 150 million uh, Worldwide Which was pretty awesome there Aquaman director James Wan Says that he's holding up the trailer He says yes they were going to have a trailer out But he says it's not ready He says you know there's so many special effects Everything pretty much is underwater And he doesn't want to release Any trailer that's not 100% Completed Uh, He says he wants every shot in the trailer to be done He doesn't want people to pick it apart He wants to make a big deal about it So they're taking their time They're getting it right And then you'll see a trailer So Don't rush the man I want to see an Aquaman trailer very bad too But I get it You don't want to be criticized You want to put out something that's not complete So take your time, get it right And then unleash it on us Uh, Let's see here We have everything wrong with Sherlock Holmes A Game of Shadows We have the new trailer for Under the Silver Lake Um Let's see, we already talked about a lot of these other trailers Um, yeah Let me see here, one second Post through some notes See, when you don't do a show for a couple weeks You, uh, have news that's not really relevant anymore So I gotta start crossing stuff off my list So Stormy Daniels, the porn star That, of course, our president slept with Um, she did a 60 Minutes interview last weekend And It was the biggest ratings in over 10 years For 60 Minutes So congratulations to them And uh, my girl Stormy Daniels In the house Uh, We have a first look at Tom Hardy And Josh Trank's Fonzo um, Where he of course is playing Al Capone Which is pretty cool there So check that out if you're interested Joe Wright is set to direct The Woman in the Window Based on the bestseller There's another Infinity War article up Talking about Elizabeth Olsen Uh, She's talking about Wanda and Vision's relationship And where it stands in Infinity War Zach McGowan will play the villain In NBC's Bad Boys spinoff Starring Gabrielle Union and Jessica Alba This Zach McGowan dude He is a villain in everything He's one of those just traditional Bad guy looking dudes That just pops up on all these sitcoms Playing a bad guy So I'm not shocked at all That he's gonna be the bad guy On the Bad Boys spinoff We have the extended look at Legion Season 2 Which premieres actually tomorrow night I think So look for that Um, Chris Evans and Ryan Reynolds have volunteered to comfort a dying young fan Which is pretty awesome man These guys are so fantastic when it comes to this stuff Ready Player One writer Zach Penn is set to adopt 
or adapt. <laughs> you can adopt and adapt it. Uh, Rom Space Knight. That's right. Uh, Hasbro's All Spark Pictures and Paramount Pictures have uh, optioned it, and they're going to be doing Rom Space Knight. Queer Eye and Nailed It have both been renewed for second seasons over on Netflix. Gina Rodriguez will not only be voicing Carmen Sandiego for an animated series, but she's also going to play the character in a live action movie. That's right, they're going to be doing a movie of Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego? Yeah, man, we used to play that game all the time. Production has officially begun on Captain Marvel, and get this I'm so excited about this. We will see the return. Of Clark Gregg as Agent Coulson Yep, Agent Phil Coulson is back, baby As well as Guardians of the Galaxy alum uh, Demon Hansu And Lee Pace That's right, Lee Pace returning as Ronin Ronin, the accuser Um, uh, So awesome that Ronin is back And Demon Hansu returning as uh, Korath I believe is his name Um How awesome is that? I mean, now some of you are going, how is that possible, right? It's possible because the Captain Marvel movie takes place in the 90s, which means Phil Coulson probably just joined S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> He's probably just a little old agent. Um, you know, Ronan is, is just a Kree warrior on his planet, along with, you know, Korath. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Pretty awesome. I'm super excited about it. I I was hoping that they were going to do something like this for the Captain Marvel movie. So I'm very very happy about that. Uh, Dope, Drug Lords, and the Toys That Made Us have also been renewed over on Netflix. Um, so that's awesome. And then uh, let's see here. Stranger Things executive producer says season three is going to be legitimately creepy. Uh, of course, it comes out next year on 2019. So, and we won't even get any Stranger Things this year. That sucks. I thought it was just coming out later in this year. That sucks. That sucks. Richard Dreyfus is set to star in a new action thriller called Daughter of the Wolf. We have uh, all the TV titles and movies coming and going to stars this month in April. One Day at a Time has been renewed for Season 3 over on Netflix. Uh, Stars has green light, given a green light to Greg Araki and Steven Soderbergh's half-hour comedy series Now Apocalypse. We have some new character posters up for Avengers Infinity War, which are pretty awesome. Uh, they're they're gem-themed, so we have a red poster, green poster, purple poster, blue poster... Um, pretty awesome. Check those out. Kevin Bacon and David Cope are reteaming for a new horror thriller called You Should Have Left, which is also based on a novel. Blumhouse Pictures will be doing that one. Jack Whitehall is joining Dwayne The Rock Johnson in Jungle Cruise. So, cool addition there. We have the first trailer for Crystal, starring Rosario Dawson. Mark Hamill. Has posted what he says George Lucas's original plan for the ending of episode 9 Would have been if George Lucas would have gone through with it So check that out if you're interested Naomi Watts is joining Mel Gibson and Frank Grillo In the new Groundhog Day style action thriller called Boss Level Sounds awesome, Joe Carnahan wrote that one uh, Amazon has given a green light to Hernan Cortez's miniseries Starring Javier Bardem from Steven Spielberg and Steven Zalane uh, so there you go It'll be a four hour mini series uh, And Amazon has given a green light Straight to series order for it Skip it around Skip it around Skip it around Skip it around um, Skip it around Skip it around <laughs> Sorry uh, The new season premiere happened last Sunday For Silicon Valley And that was pretty awesome I loved I love Silicon Valley period But it was a great season premiere So check that out um, We have everything wrong with Happy Death Day In 16 minutes or less Fox then pissed me off afterwards 
Because they have pushed back The release dates for both of their X-Men movies Now Originally this year we were so excited right Because we were going to get three X-Men movies We were going to get New Mutants Which was going to come out later this month Then we were going to have Deadpool 2 And then we were going to have X-Men Dark Phoenix Well New Mutants got pushed back uh, What a month or two ago They pushed it back to 2019 Actually February of 2019 Which we're like oh man that sucks But whatever they had to do some reshoots Well now we need to do reshoots on X-Men Dark Phoenix And because Sophie Turner is filming Game of Thrones And everybody else is busy They can't do the reshoots until late summertime Which will then not give them enough time To get the movie out by its November release date So now X-Men Dark Phoenix will be coming out in February of 2019 well, of course, they're not going to release two X-Men movies in February 2019. So that means New Mutants has been bumped again. And now New Mutants will come out in August of 2019. Confused yet? Let me say it again. X-Men Dark Phoenix has been pushed from November of this year to February of 2019. And now uh, New Mutants is being pushed from February 2019 to now August of 2019. So there you go. <sighs> It sucks. It sucks. The X Men universe has been shifted, and now we went from three movies this year to just one. So, thank you, Deadpool two, because I know we're gonna have an awesome movie. Uh, we'll see what ends up happening with these other two films. Of course, New Mutants. They're saying they want to reshoot a lot. They're gonna add some characters. They really want to go more for the horror theme on the movie. Dark Phoenix. We're not sure what happened. A couple test screenings said that the ending wasn't too good, so they wanted to redo it. And then a rumor hit just yesterday actually That a possible change to the end of the film Is to tie it in with the MCU um, That they're, that Fox and Marvel have officially come to terms They know Disney's buying it out So they're saying hey let's work together And let's bring the franchise together So they want to do something cool To bring the X-Men into the MCU And that's what they're reshooting for the end of Dark Phoenix can I believe it? I don't know. It seems a little far fetched, but that's the rumor, and I love to bring you guys rumors. <laughs> so there you go. Um, let's see here. Um, the uh, Bohemian Rhapsody Queen movie has been moved up a month, so that was supposed to come out in December. It now comes out in November. Uh, we have the brand new trailer for The House with a Clock in Its Walls. Check that out with Jack Black. Um, some more Infinity War TV spots We have the new trailer for Netflix's Kodachrome um, Which will be coming out soon Starring Jason Sudeikis, Ed Harris, and Elizabeth Olsen uh, Olivia Munn and Justin Theroux Will star in Justin Bateman's new film, Violet Strike Back has been renewed for a sixth season over on Cinemax I still need to watch this damn show The fifth season finale will air Friday, April 6th Humans Season 3 will premiere on June 5th We have your Ultimate Marvel Cinematic Universe Binge Guide So check that out Everything from Iron Man to Black Panther Look into that Robert Downey Jr. has revealed The voiced cast For his new Doctor Doolittle movie That's right There's another Doctor Doolittle movie coming Do Robert Downey Jr. is going to be doing it He's playing Doctor Doolittle so let's take a look at this cast, right? You have Emma Thompson. Um, God, stupid ads. Get off my screen. Sorry. I hate ads so much. Emma Thompson will be playing a parrot. Rami Malik from, uh, from Mr. Robot is playing Chi Chi, who is a gorilla. Craig Robinson is going to be playing a mouse. Carmen Ijago is going to be playing a lioness. Octavia Spencer will be playing a duck Ralph Fiennes will be playing a tiger Marion Cotier will be playing a fox Tom Holland, yes, Spider-Man himself Reteaming with Iron Man to play a dog uh, Kumal Nanjiani is going to be playing an ostrich John Cena is going to be playing a polar bear And Selena Gomez is going to be playing a giraffe so pretty cool there The movie's called The Voyage of Dr. Doolittle And uh, now we know our voice cast So there you go Not too shabby Annabelle Wallace is joining Mel Gibson and Frank Grillo In Boss Level 
So they're starting to ramp up the casting on that one. Um, Emily Blunt says that a new script is in the works for Edge of Tomorrow 2. Glad to see they're still working on that. I can't wait to see them finally do a sequel to Edge of Tomorrow or Live, Die, and Repeat or Live, Die, Repeat, and Repeat. Who knows what it's going to be called, so we'll see. Um, Laura Dern says that her character Vice Admiral Holdo in Star Wars The Force, uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi is Force sensitive. Ooh, take that for what it is. SEAL Team and SWAT have both been renewed for second seasons. I love SWAT. I'm really into that show right now, so glad to see that get renewed for a second season. Um, rumor going around that at least half of New Mutants is going to be reshot. That's pretty crazy. Um, let's see here. Uh, teens develop special powers in a brand new trailer for the Darkest Minds. It comes out August third. Pretty cool trailer. Kids got some powers. They're on the run. The government wants them, of course. So check that out. Um, Emily Blunt also says she delayed the Edge of Tomorrow sequel because she went to do Mary Poppins. So thanks a lot, Emily. No, I'm just joking. Mary Poppins too should be pretty cool. Uh, there's a Lego Incredibles game coming, which would be pretty cool. It'll feature scenes and sequences from both films. Football star Rob Gronkowski is joining the movie Boss Level. We're back to that again. The Mel Gibson, Frank Grillo, and Annabelle Wallace, Naomi Watts, and Will Sasso are now joined by Rob Gronkowski uh, in Boss Level. The Roseanne revival premieres to massive ratings. And this thing just keeps blowing up. When it first debuted, they said the premiere had 18.2 million people watch, which is phenomenal. Then they said, well, no, the numbers came in and it was 20 million. Wow, okay, 20 million people watched it. Now after they counted in like Hulu and DVR and all kinds of stuff like that, now it's 25 million people. Insane. That many people checked out the Roseanne revival But hey good for them man That's pretty pretty awesome And of course pretty shortly after there They said hey Roseanne's renewed for another season (laughs) What a shocker You can't get 25 million people To watch an episode and then not renew the show Right? You know that there's an audience there EA Games is reportedly developing An open world Star Wars video game That would be pretty interesting If so Speaking of PlayStation, the PlayStation VR price has been permanently reduced by $100. That's awesome. I love my PSVR. Go get one. If you had any hesitation, I'm telling you it's awesome. Check it out. The SNES Classic is back in stock over at GameStop. You can get it for $79.99. Um, TNT has released the promo for Animal Kingdom Season 3. Emmy winner Jay Roach is set to direct the TV series based on Michael Wolff's Fire and Fury Joe Berlinger's documentary series Wrong Man will be debuting on June 3rd over on the Stars Network Damon Lindelof and Jason Bloom are going to be uh, teaming up for The Hunt which will be a new action thriller it was written by Damon Lindelof and Nick Hughes and Jason Blum's Blumhouse Pictures will produce the film Netflix has ordered a cursed TV series from Frank Miller and Tom Wheeler. That's right. Uh, be based on the book Reimagining of King Arthur. Very, very interesting right there, man. A new take on King Arthur once again over on Netflix. Do do. Um, <laughs> craziness. Tobias Menzies is set to take over the role of Prince Philip in the Netflix series The Crown. Once again, man, this is starting to become the Netflix show all over again. Pedro Pascal has been cast in Wonder Woman 2. Great casting here. Pedro's awesome. I loved him in Kingsman 2, The Golden Circle. Um, We don't know who he's playing in Wonder Woman, but great addition there. Um... The First Purge will be a more personal film than the previous films. We should hopefully be getting a trailer for that pretty soon, too. Sharknado 6 is on the way, yeah. But it will also be the last in the franchise. Boo. No, I'm just playing. I haven't even seen one Sharknado movie. But yes, the sci-fi franchise is finally coming to an end, as Sharknado 6 will be the last. 
Let's see here. Jojo Rabbit, that's right. Scarlett Johansson is in final talks to star Taika Waititi, uh, to star in Taika Waititi's new film, Jojo Rabbit, which just sounds incredibly crazy. Um, but she'd be an awesome addition. She always is. Um, you Jackman, he's in talks to star in a new film called Bad Education. So that's pretty cool there. Um, we don't know much else about it other than they say it's kind of in the vein of election. Uh, remember that old movie with Reese Witherspoon and Matthew Broderick? That's, that's, that's all we know. We have the Honest trailer for Star Wars The Last Jedi. So check that out. Um, yeah, check that one out. And then let me see here. Got another new trailer that dropped. This one is for Ethan Hawke's new film, First Reformed. I swear there's a new Ethan Hawke trailer out like every week, but I never see any of these movies come out. I don't know what the hell he's filming, man, but it's crazy. John Cena says it would be a dream to join his buddy Dwayne The Rock Johnson in a Fast and Furious movie. So we'll see if any of that ever comes to be. Gore Verbinski is set uh, to direct Sebastian Stan in a new film called Beat the Ripper. With, uh, Beat the Re- Reaper um, that will be produced by Leonardo DiCaprio. Very cool there. Uh, we have the Season 2 trailer for Westworld. Looking very forward to that. Now, HBO has been saying that they're working on a Deadwood movie. They say it's coming real close. But we talked to Timothy Oliphant, and he says, No fucking way will it happen. That is a quote. He says, No fucking way. Um, that's just what Timothy Oliphant said. Who knows? After he said that, HBO said, No, nah, man, we're still planning on doing this. So um, we'll see what ends up happening with it. Let's see here. Spike Lee's new film, Passover, will hit Amazon Prime on April 20th. Uh, so, yeah, it's straight to Amazon Prime. Pretty cool there. New original movie. Um, we got some Captain Marvel set photos, so check that out. Evan Rachel Wood, Gina Rodriguez are all set to star in a new heist film uh, Along with Richard Jenkins and Deborah Winger And um, yeah, it'll be a currently untitled heist film So I love heist films, so I'll definitely check it out Kathy Griffin will appear as Kellyanne Conway On a new Comedy Central special called Make America Great-a-thon FXX has released the Season 9 official trailer for Archer, so check that out. The untitled James Gunn Horror Project has added four more stars. Jackson Dunn, David Denham, uh, Meredith Hagner, and Matt Jones have all joined up with Elizabeth Banks to round out the cast for the untitled James Gunn Horror Project. Over on SNL, John Mulaney will host on April 14th with musical guest Jack White. Um, Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston are going to be reteaming for a new Netflix ensemble, which will be a comedy murder mystery. Ooh. Uh, I love Just Go With It, which is the other movie they did together, so I'm looking forward to them reteaming. I, I think that'll be good. James Wan and Roy Lee are going to team up to tackle Stephen King's The Tommy Knockers. That's right, Tommy Knockers is going to get a James Wan spin. On it as they do a film version uh, Very very cool James Wan will be producing it uh, Freeform Has cast the new Paul Feig comedy called Girls Code which is coming to the Freeform Network um, Claire Foy Talks about playing Elizabeth Salander In the Girl in the Spider's Web Check that out Um Bill and Ted Reunited, that's right Entertainment Weekly put together Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter Together, finally And they talk about possibly Bill and Ted 3 And everything else in between Check it out, it was a pretty cool read Um We have the new official trailer For Cargo, starring Martin Freeman It's a new zombie movie Which I believe is also coming to Netflix <laughs> Cause everything's Netflix Black Panther composer Ludwig Gorosan will also score the upcoming Venom movie. We have the new trailer for Revenge. You can see Brie Larson in action on the Captain Marvel set. We got that up on our Twitter page. Um, glad to hear Arnold Schwarzenegger is doing better. He went under. He undergone uh, emergency heart surgery a couple days ago. And my heart, my heart stopped just reading that because I'm a massive fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
I've always appreciated him. I've always appreciated his work. And uh, I got real worried when I saw emergency heart surgery. But then we found out that he is doing better. And um, now he's in stable. He's been in stable condition. He's at home now. He's been tweeting out, talking about how great he's doing. And uh, that's awesome. But then, what was that? He's here? He's here right now? Hello, everybody. It's me, Arnold, the governor. I just wanted to come back to the Emma on the air and tell everybody I'm okay. My heart, my heart is full of pumps. It pumps me up every single day. And I'm here, I'm here to tell you guys that I'll be back. I'll be back in all facets of life. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. So thank you, Dom Mega, for your love and your support. But I'm here. I'm here. Now I need to go get to the chopper. I gotta get to the chopper. Well, damn, that was a surprise entry from Arnold himself, man. That was awesome. Uh, so glad to see he's doing well and getting to that chopper over there. Damn, that was crazy. Steven Spielberg has confirmed that Colin Trevorrow will come back and direct the third Jurassic World movie. Uh, Colin Trevorrow did the first film, and then, of course, he stepped away for the second one that Jay Bayona just did that comes out this summer, Fallen Kingdom. But then he will come back to direct the third So that's pretty awesome I think it's good for him to come back and do that Especially after he fell out of doing uh, the next Star Wars movie Right? That's probably the only thing holding him back <laughs> So you know, I guess I'll come back and do that little Jurassic Park movie Kate McKinnon is in talks to join Danny Boyle And Richard Curtis in their new comedy Over at Universal and Working Title So um, don't know much else about it But hey, she's in talks for it And I love Kate McKinnon So let her do it, right? Why not Let's see here Like I said Roseanne's already been renewed For an 11th season Over on ABC So that's pretty cool there Um, We got your first look at Pixar's new short film Called Bayo Which will be playing in front of Incredibles 2 So get a look at that Um, And some interesting news John Hamm was going to play Mr. Sinister In The New Mutants It was going to be an after credit scene um, but now it sounds like the scene's been scrapped and he will no longer do it, which is very disappointing because I think John Ham John Ham as Mister Sinister would have been so awesome. I want to see that. So very disappointed that they're not going to keep that up and rolling. Um, we got another director swap over on True Detective season three. They keep shifting stuff on that damn thing, so that that really sucks. Um, but hopefully it comes out great. I know they're working on it They've already filmed a couple episodes So we're going to switch directors midway through And um You know it happens A lot of shows are dire- every episode Directed by a new director So might as well right uh, A League of Their Own is getting their own series Over at Amazon So that's pretty cool They're going to get their own uh, TV series It's also supposed to be more of a modern adaptation Of the story So that's pretty cool there Let's see um, uh, Ready Player One Of course coming out this past weekend Finishing the four day Box office with around 52 million dollars um, Which is pretty awesome there um, Lots of de- Decent money man I don't know for a four day it's It's okay the three day was a little underperforming of what they wanted, but it did make a lot of money overseas. And once again, that overseas money means a lot. Yeah, it was actually a hundred and eighty-one million dollars worldwide for Ready Player One. Very, very cool. And they needed it, man. The movie cost almost two hundred million to make, so they got to get that money in, son. We have everything wrong with Coco in fourteen minutes or less. Um, Let's see Here Um, We already talked about that We have your final trailer For A Quiet Place Um, So check that out The movie comes out Friday But if you want to see one more trailer Check it out John Boyega confirms that Finn and Rey Won't be split up in episode 9 So that's good to know Because I didn't like them split up at all Uh, Jesus Christ Superstar has risen NBC's ratings That's right, the early ratings are in And uh, it was a very well reviewed Easter musical And it did very well for NBC So congratulations, glad to hear about that um, Dr. Strange Writer reveals details on the sequel's villain and the plot So check that out if you're interested in what they're cooking up 
for um, Doctor Strange. Jeremy Solner, who is directing the first two episodes of True Detective Season 3, has left the project. They say it's for scheduling conflicts, but it's probably creative differences. Creed 2 has officially started production in Philadelphia. The whole cast is returning, of course. Uh, Dolph Lundgren is back as Ivan Drago. I must break him, which is pretty awesome. I'm excited about that. Zazie Beats is joining Kristen Stewart in Against All Enemies. Um, which is another, like I said, man, she's popping up all over the place. You want another project? I'll give it to you. Zazie Beats has also joined Natalie Portman in Pale Blue Dot. That is right. The CW has renewed um, a lot of shows. They're bringing back Riverdale. They're bringing back Supernatural. They've renewed 10 series in all. Jane the Virgin. And guess what? All the superhero shows. That's right. Arrow. Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Supergirl, Black Lightning. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Ooh, I'm dying. All the superhero shows getting new seasons, which is just really, really cool. I love it. That's all I care about over on the CW, giving me my superhero shows. Where is my super suits? Also coming back as Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. But Rachel Bloom says that it will be ending after season four. So it is the final season there. Tracy Morgan and Aldous Hodge have joined the cast of What Men Want, which will be uh, the new movie with Taraji P. Henson and basically a role reversal of the 2000 comedy What Women Want that had Mel Gibson where he could hear what women were thinking. They're going to flip it. Taraji P. Henson, she can hear what guys are thinking. So I like it. Let's do it. We have the trailer for Seth Rogen's Hilarity for Charity, which will be debuting on April 6th. Check out that trailer. Mila Jovovich, Jeremy Irvine, Alfie Allen, and Aquafina are joining Paradise Hills. New movie that their sci-fi thriller they're putting together. Stranger Things star Matthew Modine is joining a new drama called Miss Virginia. We have the first trailer for Future World starring James Franco. Joaquin Phoenix, he still won't talk the Joker role. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. He still keeps dodging it. He, But he did admit, it could be pretty interesting. But I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the damn Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, Vinium Bizuna has been cast in a new Fox pilot called Culture Clash. He's replacing Bernard David Jones as the male lead in the upcoming comedy pilot. John Kruginski... Uh, has said that he would love to play Mr. Fantastic in a Fantastic Four reboot. I think he'd be a great Mr. Fantastic. I've always thought about John Krasinski doing that one. The Good Doctor is going to be losing an original cast member, but it's adding four more series regulars to the next season. Uh, Chuku Madu, who played Dr. Jared Kalu, will not be returning for season two. In some sad news, another uh, relationship bites the dust. Channing Tatum and Jenna Dewan Tatum are splitting up after eight years of marriage. They said they have lovingly chosen to separate as a couple. It's funny because I was talking to my wife last night. And my wife loves Channing Tatum. And I said to her, yeah, they, they just, they're getting a divorce. And she goes, so you're saying I have a chance. And I said, you know what, babe, that goes both ways because... Jenna Dewan Tatum is so hot So I said yeah you know I'll go for Jenna She can go for Channing And we'll both be happy right So uh, I, I love it I love it So <laughs> I like how it played out for us both uh, We have the new trailer for How to Talk to Girls at Parties Which is a new sci-fi movie With Nicole Kidman and Elle Fanning uh, uh, Alien touring the galaxy uh, This thing's crazy Check out the trailer A new Gormengast series Is coming from Neil Gaiman and Akiva Goldsman uh, So yeah, look for that uh, adaptation We have the new trailer for Night School Starring Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish So check that out Matt Reeves says things are still going really, really well On the Batman So, well, you know, still no real info But I guess things are still going really, really well According to Matt Reeves Catherine Hahn will star in a new HBO comedy pilot Called Mrs. Fletcher we have 138 Easter eggs listed up and pop culture references in the movie Ready Player One. Like I said, there's a ton. So uh, check out that article if you want to find out some of the some of the stuff that has been caught so far. 
Yu Laurie has joined Hulu's new original limited series called Catch-22 um, And he'll be playing Major D. Coverly uh, in the upcoming show Fox Searchlight has also signed an exclusive deal with Guillermo del Toro uh, So he'll be bringing a lot of projects to Fox Searchlight uh, Black Panther has just passed Jurassic World and Frozen at the box office It is now the fourth biggest movie domestically, I think, of all time um, Universal Pictures has hired a writer for Armada Which is based uh, on the book which is, which is going to be an adaptation of the book by Ready Player One writer Ernie Klein So that's pretty cool there, this guy's got an awesome imagination Let's, let's start doing all this stuff, right? <laughs> Why not? Eric Bana is joining Connie Britton In a new um, show called Dirty John Which is coming to Bravo We have the trailer for The Cleanse Starring Johnny Galecki Which is a new fantasy comedy movie Adam Sandler is going to be making his A24 debut um, With a new thriller called Uncut Gems Legends of Tomorrow has promoted Jess McCallan to a series regular for season 4 uh, It looks like the new Flash movie might not be called Flashpoint after all uh, We don't know what it'll be called It might still even be called Flashpoint But it sounds like the inner workings have said it's not called that anymore And they're going in a different direction Riverdale star KJ Appa is replacing Kean Lawley in the new film The Hate You Give that's right, they're basically doing a all the money in the world thing Where, remember that movie when it came out and they bumped out um, uh, Kevin Spacey and then, put, <laughs> and then just replaced him in the film, right? So this movie here has this guy, Kean Lawley, in it Who I guess is a YouTube star And then he had some videos up there where he was uttering racial slurs He pissed a lot of people off And now they've removed him from the project And they're bringing in KJ Who plays Archie in Riverdale And he is going to reshoot all of the scenes And they're putting him in the movie instead So I love it uh, They're doing the Christopher Plummer here with Archie over here So why not? We have everything wrong with Murder on the Orient Express We have the honest trailer for Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle um, So some good additions there And our everything wrong with And um, honest trailers for sure And we have the new trailer for Upgrade um, Starring Logan Marshall Green um, There's a green band and a red band So definitely check out both And I think... That will do it Let me see here Let me check one more note Yep I was right That is it So yeah That's all our news here I know we went a little over an hour So I do apologize But like I said Two weeks worth of news man It's a pain To wrap it all up Into a nice bow for you all And get you up to speed On all the latest and greatest So let's Just run through All our um, Release dates And box office And we'll head on out of here out on DVD and Blu-ray, uh, actually as of today, is Insidious, The Last Key, and Father Figures, uh, both pretty blah movies. In theaters Friday will be Blockers, A Quiet Place, Isle of Dogs, and Chappaquiddick. I'll definitely be seeing Blockers on Friday, and I'm going to try to go this weekend and also see A Quiet Place. So, I hope on the next episode to have two reviews for you on those two. I'm looking very forward to both films. And here's your weekend box office uh, Over the past weekend Number 10 was Paul, Apostle of Christ With 3.5 mil Number 9 was A Wrinkle in Time With 4.7 million Number 8 was Tomb Raider with a, with a 4.7 Number 7 was Love, Simon With 4.8 Number 6 was Sherlock Gnomes with 7 million Number 5 was Pacific Rim Uprising with 9.2 Number 4 was I Can Only Imagine With 10.8 Number three was Black Panther with 11.3 Number two was another debut It was Tyler Perry's Acrimony Bringing in 17.1 mil And your number one film Like we talked about already Ready Player One Bringing in 41.2 million dollars So an okay debut for Ready Player One But 41.2 mil for the three day 53 mil for the four day and over 180 million worldwide So we'll see how that international box office Keeps on playing into it all And with that being said my friends That will do it for us here on Am I on the Air Thank you so much for tuning in And hanging with me for almost an hour and a half here today 
um, as we got caught up to speed and all the latest and greatest in entertainment news, TV, movies, reviews, the whole nine. So thank you so much. Once again, uh, here's our social media rundown, right? Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash am I on the air. Our official webpage is just simply am I on the air.com. Go ahead over to there and you can see a lot of great stuff. Um, uh, follow us on Twitter at am I on the air. Follow me on Twitter at DX Don Mega. Um, of course, once again, we're available to stream not only on iTunes. So if Apple's your thing, definitely get us on iTunes, download, rate, subscribe, do it up. Outside of iTunes, like I said, Spotify, baby. That's right, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn. We're all over the interwebs now. It's pretty fantastic. I am loving it. We're on Instagram, so give us a follow over there. Just search Am I on the Air. Like I said, follow me on Stardust. It's simply Don Mega, D O N M E G A. If you download the app, follow me first. It really helps me out because that's how they track who brings people to the app. So definitely appreciate that. Download it and follow me first. And uh, of course, our great affiliates over at reddragonsradio.com. Make sure you bookmark that. We got a lot of cool shows on there. We just got a brand new show up on Red Dragons Radio called Rachel Squared, the Drunk Girls Podcast. And uh, it's a really cool show. They just did their debut episode and it's up on Red Dragons Radio. So welcome to the team. RedDragonsRadio.com You can follow on Twitter at RedDragonsRadio So you always know what's going down With all the latest and greatest podcasts Once again, that'll do it for me Broadcasting live here from the Red Dragons Radio Studios Here in Tucson, Arizona It is this Tuesday, April the 3rd Thank you so much for tuning in And we'll be back uh, Hopefully within less than a week now With two new reviews for you And everything else going on in the world Of entertainment So until next time y'all, have a great week Peace. Bye, everybody. Red Dragons! Red Dragons!